how wonderful it is to be here at Mile High Church together in this silence and this stillness to listen deeply at those gaps between the words. And so we just give thanks for this time together knowing that it is so very blessed that there is an abundance and love of the universe that is always for us and never against us. And so as we settle into this sacred time together, just do so knowing that you are absolutely surrounded by love, by wisdom, by clarity, and the absolute divine essence of spirit, of God, of our higher power. And so we just revel in that space this afternoon, knowing that there is a deepness and a stillness and a wonderful presence that is all around us. And we anchor that by saying together, and so it is. Thank you, Reverend Carol. Good afternoon. Hey, it's wonderful to be here with you. Uh, on this day where we celebrate a Rockies victory and a questionable Broncos game. <laughs> we need some meditation after that. Yeah, we're having a wonderful day here at Mile High. Uh, I always look forward to this service as a, an opportunity just to go deep and to, uh, you know, get still with you, but also just to try to distill uh, this message in uh, a way that matters. So uh, we, we're doing a two-week series uh, called The Art of Abundance, and you know, I just really love you, and I love the people here at Mile High. And from my minister's heart, uh, I, I often just ask, okay, so what's needed? Uh, what, what seems to be beckoning uh, in the collective that is Mile High? And it seems like a return to some basic ideas around abundance uh, seems to be called for now. So, uh, or maybe it's just me. Uh, but at any rate, I'm going to share a, a two-part series on the art of abundance. I got the title, art, uh, the title idea from a friend of mine in the ministry, uh, Dennis Merritt Jones. He wrote a great book called uh, The Art of Abundance, and I had him get some copies. It's really good. It's new, and he did a really fine, fine job of it. So that can be some extra uh, resource for you. People worry a lot about their abundance, don't they? Uh, in one way or another. And, and abundance really is the good of life flowing into any and every area of life. So it's, it's much more than just money and possessions. And yet, no matter uh, who one is, according to our uniqueness, many, many people can worry. And worry uh, doesn't take us uh, all that far. Uh, it's, it's a dead end. And it dawns on me that really there's only two things you ever have to worry about. And so you can dispense with a whole lot of other worry. So here's what, here's what you need to know. Either you're successful or you're not. Now, if you're successful, you have nothing to worry about. But if you're not successful, you still only have two things to worry about. Either you're healthy or you're not. Now, if you're healthy, you have nothing to worry about. However, if you're not healthy, you have two things to worry about. Either you're alive or you're not. Now, if you're alive, you have nothing to worry about. But if you're not alive, you have two things to worry about. Either you're in heaven or in hell. Now, if you're in heaven, you have nothing to worry about. <laughs> However, if you're in hell, don't worry about it because your friends will welcome you there and show you a good time. <laughs> and good news is we don't have to worry about hell because we know it doesn't exist. So you really don't have anything to worry about. But let's today dispense with a lot of the worry around abundance. Now, the first step in this is uh, the essential ingredient in the art of abundance, and that is an abundance consciousness. This is imperative. We have to have this abundance consciousness. Now, I want to articulate uh, right from the beginning the difference between abundance and prosperity. Abundance is the universal life of the one. Call it God or infinite intelligence, uh, divine energy. It doesn't matter what name you call it. But we know that there is a universal, all-originating source and spirit or life. And that is omnipresent. It's not just spread thin across the vast cosmos. It's omnipresent everywhere within the cosmos. So everywhere is a pocket of the infinite abundance of the divine. So right where you are, that infinite abundance resides. You are living within it. All right? That love, that intelligence, that light, that creative source is abundance. Prosperity is 
the amount of that that we allow through our consciousness to take form in our life. So our prosperity is how much we have manifest in, in our life, the abundance that's available to us. And so the problem with this whole situation is we often define our sense of abundance by our judgment of our current prosperity. And that's a very limiting thing. And the more we get caught up in limiting judgments of our current prosperity, we perpetuate that. We perpetuate it rather than anchoring in an abundance consciousness that is ours. So really, it is an art. There is an art to this whole thing. It's the art of taking responsibility for our overall consciousness and making it healthier and more abundant. And it's the art of moving out of being entrapped in belief systems of lack and limitation and scarcity. But to remember that we're walking and living and drawing from an infinite supply, an infinite energy, an infinite abundance. And that can help us when things shift and change in the world of, of effects in terms of our standard prosperity. Let me say a little bit more about consciousness. That word we use a whole lot around here really means the sum total of all of your beliefs, all the beliefs you have had since becoming conscious. Your consciousness bears the imprint of everything you have deeply believed, everything that you have bought into, everything that you have said yes to or that you've believed is so, everything that, that you know to be so, your convictions, that all of that comprises your consciousness. And, and so it depends on, on how you've been uh, uh, developing that consciousness as to the effects of it uh, in your life. But the kicker in this whole thing is that consciousness is causation. Now the mystics of old have tried to teach us this, as within, so without. Uh, as above, so below. That they've been trying to say that from an invisible dimension of intelligence and information, all of life unfolds. And what we have understood in our metaphysics, and what now quantum science is also uh, corroborating, is that everything moves from the invisible to the visible, and, and you're a channel for that. So your consciousness of life is outpicturing itself. And, and so consciousness is creative, it's, it's causal. Consciousness is causation. Say that with me. Consciousness is causation. The ultimate tendencies of my life resemble my consciousness. And my consciousness sets boundaries to how much of the limitless abundance I can enjoy and, and utilize in my life. And maybe you've seen times, I've seen in my own life, as I've observed the growth of my consciousness over my years, I've seen how as I, one way or another, came upon expanding consciousness, my life corresponded to that. It grew. As my consciousness grows, my life grows. And this is what's available to all of us. But it begins by understanding that you already are living in abundance. You're already designed as an outlet for infinite abundance. And it's all been given you. And it has to, though, flow through our consciousness. It can only flow through our consciousness. Now, uh, when it says in the Bible, as thou hast believed, so shall it be done unto you, what we would say in terms of this message is, as it is in consciousness, so is it in my experience. So that's always the creative gift and the creative stamp that I'm bringing to experience is my consciousness. And it's showing up in one way or another. It's affecting things. It's pushing certain things away and inviting certain things in. Always my consciousness is at work. Or as Dennis says in his book, um, I'm going to get this right too. He says, your consciousness goes before you to announce your coming. And I love what Sri Aurobindo wrote. He said, consciousness is the fundamental thing in existence. It is the energy, the motion, the movement of consciousness that creates the universe and all that is in it. The macrocosm and the microcosm are nothing but consciousness arranging itself. And so it is in our own life too. So where have you been hanging out? Have you been hanging out in the land of scarcity and limitation? Well, that land is governed by a harsh ruler called fear. And usually that fear comes from a sense of personal unworthiness. So a message like this is also a call to realize that the key element of our consciousness is the degree to which we feel valuable and lovable 
and worthy. And that too is kind of like a governor valve of our prosperity. All the infinite ocean of divine abundance is pressing against us in terms of ideas and potential. And yet it has to flow through the valve of our consciousness. And the key element is our sense of worth. And our fear, our fear rises and falls according to our judgment and assessment of things in our life and also our sense of personal worth. We're meant to be living in the kingdom of ever-expanding good. And today I want to uh, invite you to practice your ABCs. And uh, these four points all have the first letters of ABC. And the first one is that abundance bathes creation. I invite you, as you participate in this, to sense the abundance of life, the invisible vibratory field of infinite potential that you're part of. You're, it's produced your body. It's produced all of this universe. It flows into your consciousness. It wants to use you and me as an outlet. This is an abundant universe because it's the very essence of the divine. Now, at the level of materiality, there's limits. There's resource limits and all of this. But the whole of what's bringing forth all of life is absolutely abundant, infinitely so. There's no limitation in the divine. And so we get to anchor that ever more fully and, and, and let that take root within us, especially when things are changing. Here's the biggest problem is that we begin to think that the things of the world are our source, that our job is the source, or our investments, or our bank account, or the economy, or aging Aunt Tilly, uh, is, that these are our source. But those are always things that fluctuate. Those are subject to change because they're of the world. What doesn't change is the infinite abundance of which we're a part. And as things in our world of prosperity change, we need to stay rooted in abundance. That there are always new ideas that can take us over. There's always new opportunity that can unfold for us because we're a part of something that is limitless life. And that makes all the difference in the world. As Wayne Dyer put it, we don't acquire abundance we tune into it. We tune into it. I invite you to tune in. Tune into the abundance in you and all around you. And define yourself as a part of that abundance, not an assessment of your, of your money life or your relationship life or your health life or anything. You're more than that. So abundance bathes creation. And awareness builds consciousness. It's the next ABC. So we get to practice awareness and we get to stay mindful of, of where our thinking life is going and what we're believing, what we're giving the stamp of our authority to. Um, that's, that's such a vital, important thing. It's about having the courage to be self-aware and to notice when elements of an old consciousness surface for us to understand them. And, and so if you ask yourself, to what degree do, have I bought into not enough and in what areas of my life? Where do I feel that there'll not be enough? And in what area? And usually a sinking feeling comes along or a fear feeling or something comes up. And this is good because when those old things come up, we get to work with them. There's a difference between emotions and feelings. Emotions are historic. It's old stored up energy. And, and as it comes up, that's perfect. Because the thing to do with it is not to try to hold it back, not to judge yourself, but to let it come up. Let that old fear or that old whatever come up and be present to it. Or as we say in the meditation retreat, be the wise witness of it. Be the wise witness of that. You know? And the more you just witness the sensation and don't get involved in the story about what's come up, that sensation eventually resolves or dissolves. It's like you've displaced it. And then you can energize a new idea with, and, and energize it with feeling and, and aliveness. And the more you do that, you replace that and you start evolving your consciousness. And then this is not a quick fix process. It's like in every day, I'm going to do every day, I'm going to sense this abundance that's bathing the universe and I'm going to anchor that. And then when these feelings of not enoughness come up, I'm going to face them, let them dissipate and then anchor something new. Awareness builds consciousness and how powerful that is. And then the third ABC is activate bold creativity. A part of, of being a, a master of abundance consciousness is to be open, 
open to greater ideas, new ideas. Let greater ideas that are even beyond what you've ever dreamt possible have an outlet through you. Almost every great enterprise that really brought forth massive abundance was first an idea. In fact, everything that ever was was first an idea. But think of all of the things that have come forth that were ideas and have just been uh, this amazing abundance. Uh, somebody thought that, you know, making rubber shoes with holes, and what about that? And, and by golly, you know, it was quite a prosperous thing. They, somebody thought, why do I have a camera and a phone? Why don't I put them both together? And now the phones are obsolete, and somebody made a bunch on that. The founders of Tom Monahan and the founders of Domino said, hey, what if we delivered pizza to people? Whew, off they went. Now you can get anything delivered to you. Stuff you don't even want uh, can show up <laughs> at your doorstep. So ideas, open to new ideas, always open to bold creativity. But here's the last one, and it's so important. Always bless circumstances. You know, as you get the distinction between the abundance of which you're a part that has produced you, that's inexhaustible, that's changeless, and then you see the world changing. Uh, you see money going away or economies fluctuating and windfalls and then things being lost and people leaving and, and jobs changing. and fall. The world is going to always have change going on. We've got to stay rooted in our abundance. Now... When something unexpected and disappointing comes along in our life, our humanness shows up and we need to be compassionate about that and let those emotional reactions, usually old stuff that's been stored, come up and we can observe it, just be present to it and let that energy be displaced from us and then we can go to something deeper, richer. We can, we can start giving energy and acceptance and gratitude to the truth and start, again, evolving our consciousness. But really it's important to not get stuck in lack stories about our experiences. Because every experience that comes along, especially the difficult ones, ultimately will say, all right, after your reaction, your humanness around this, what are you finally going to name this? What stamp are you going to give this experience? How are you going to weave this experience into your life story? That's your creation. That's not done to you by the experience. We all create uh, the ultimate determination, the ultimate designation of, of, an, of every experience in our lives. I'm inviting you to bless that. You see, here's a secret. The root word for the word bless means to confer prosperity upon. So even the most devastating lost experience, what if you decided after you got over yourself, as we all do, <laughs> what if you decided, I'm going to bless this. I'm going to know the higher truth, that there's always something greater residing in the invisible dimension of possibility, no matter what has happened, no matter what's been lost. In every illness, the allness of God is there. In every, every challenge, the allness of God. In every absence, the presence of the divine is still there. And so what if I bless this? What if I decide that prosperity can emerge from the field of abundance if I declare it so? And if I will bless this situation? But if we don't bless it, then our consciousness has weakened. And we hold that as the reason why we can't prosper. And there's no reason we can't prosper. So I invite you into the field of abundance and, and to bless. And if there's a situation that's happened in your life previously that you didn't bless... You can bring that forward and you can see the old emotions that are around it and you can let those flow away as you just observe it and then you can decide something new and bless it even if it's past. I want to close with this illustration that I think is such a telling one. This lady, Janine Roth, uh, is now an author. Uh, she's currently uh, written a number of books, but the book Women, Food, and God is one that was her bestseller. And she teaches women and men also about uh, some different ideas about food and how it's really a spiritual issue for them. But here's this story for her. In 2008, she and her husband, uh, Matt, um, discovered that the, the, the person that they had given their entire life savings to to manage, Bernie Madoff, had lost it all in what has become the largest fraud in U.S. history. Bernie Madoff uh, had a Ponzi scheme, $65 billion, and, and 
almost everybody lost everything in that. And so did Janine Roth and her husband. They lost everything. And she was in shock, and she cried, and she raged for a while. She felt doomed. She eventually felt a whole lot of shame that she didn't realize it ahead of time, shame that they'd invested everything in that. But later she declared it was one of the best things that ever happened to me in my life. Because in losing everything, 30 years of life savings, gone. I had to focus on what I had and not what I didn't have. Because there was no way of getting through the night with the terror of that loss. I realized that if I was going to live, if I was going to sleep, if I was going to exist, I had to bring my mind back from the terror and start focusing on what was good. And I had to be fierce about it. There was no choice. Otherwise, I'd careen off into such grief and terror and shame, and that was not a way to live. And so she started simple with looking at what she had. She said, I have this cup, this water, this, my arms, my legs, my breath. I have my husband I love, a roof over my head. And she says, and the most amazing thing happened. Within about a week, I found myself happier than I had been in years. It happens when you start seeing what you have and not what you don't have. And I gained confidence that I could bring my mind back from the brink of terror. And that for the rest of my life, no matter what terrible thing ever happened, I saw that if I was conscious about noticing what I did have, not what I didn't have, what was good, that would change my mind and thus my experience and my whole life. And she says, if you don't have this kind of spiritual practice, you're lost. Well, she went on to write books after that. She was on Oprah. She's an enormous success. But I wonder what would have happened if eventually she hadn't arrived at a place that she could bless that. So I'm inviting you to practice your ABCs because I want you to, to prosper. And more than anything, I also want you to be able to ride out the rough waves whenever things like that come in any and every, every area of your life. Because you're designed for abundance. You live in abundance. And that can help you and prosper you. All right? So with that said, it's time for our wonderful... Uh, experience of quietness. Again, if you're new to this service, now we get to contemplate on this. And so in this uh, time, you might want to contemplate on the field of abundance that you're part of it. Not so much an analyzing of it, but just a heart sent felt, felt feeling of it. Or maybe you'll just want to do a meditation practice that I'll guide you into. But first, uh, Annie, can you bring us into this? Get ready, my soul. I'm diving in. Get ready, my soul. I'm diving in to the deepest kind. Everything I've ever dreamed 
that beautiful energy. We let our bodies release any tension, settling back into the chair. Breathing deeply. Scanning the body to see if there's any tension. Letting go. That we might merge into the beautiful, enriching stillness. That this abundance of the universe might move and have its way with us, enrich us in our quietude. Check your forehead and relax it, your eyes, your jaw. Consciously allow tension to drain from your shoulders and your back. Let your shoulders fall. Check the pit of the stomach, the solar plexus, and Breathe into that energy center and release any cares or concerns, worry, let go. Scan the legs and the feet and release the tension. But you might enjoy this time contemplating the infinite ocean of abundant divine life <clears throat> in which you live, move, and have your very being. Or perhaps you'll want to just <clears throat> follow your breath and become even more still and open up to the dynamic, beautiful depths of your being as it melds into the universal. I bless you in this time.
beautiful to bask in this abundant silence, sensing all that is ready to pour forth in our lives. We know there's only the one, birthless, deathless, changeless spirit, pouring its essence into all form and transcending all forms, life of our life, breath of our breath, the love of our being. And we just sense this vital and precious essence. And give thanks for the realization that we live, move, and have our being in this life divine, providing for us all energy, all new ideas. It is the sanctity and eternality of our souls. So many blessings. Our homeland. So I give thanks for this day of realization as we come out of living in a land of limitation and scarcity and return anew to our homeland of the kingdom of ever-expanding good. As we live from this place and let our consciousness become enriched and rooted in this, I know that an abundance of blessings pours forth I know that each and every one of us become strong attractors of beautiful and meaningful, joyous experiences. I know that our attunement to this divine intelligence guides us on our path, restores and renews us consistently, rebuilds when there's been a tearing down, always lifting us up, always conspiring for our highest and best. And I know this is so for you, for me. And we bless all beings everywhere, knowing that the impress of the Spirit is bringing forth ever greater waves of awakening to that abundance that might, we might dissolve the needless suffering, the needless impoverishment experiences, that our boundless hearts from boundless being might prosper all upon our beautiful planet, including the planet itself. Therefore, I, may we feel joy and gratitude in our hearts this day for this truth that is setting us free to continue to grow and to evolve, free to look at situations and call forth the higher good within them, to bless them masterfully, to always be the outlet for something greater to emerge beyond that which seems to be Oh, infinite spirit divine, how grateful we are to know your presence as us, to receive and to give of the gifts so freely given us, our bodies, our breath, our families, this planet. So much glory. How grateful. How prosperous we feel. And we give thanks for the integrity of life itself and knowing that all is unfolding for our highest and best. Now I know this is so for you and for me. And I say thank you, Spirit. Just take a moment and feel intense gratitude for you, for all that adorns your life, for the truth of your being. For this planet. And for all that is unfolding through your open and evolving abundance consciousness. I know it's good and very good. And may we conclude this beautiful time together by affirming peace, harmony and love abounding, growing, spreading across this planet. May we know the oneness of all beings, celebrating the diversity of all human expression and all life expression. 
We give thanks for greater peace. May peace prevail upon our earth. And so for this and more than words can say, may we be grateful and declare, and so it is, and so I am, and so we are. Amen. Take a deep breath. Activate your awareness to this room. Perhaps stretch a little bit without socking the person next to you. <laughs> uh, that's good. Thank you for being here on this day. I always love to be in this field of meditation with you. It's a very beautiful, beautiful thing. It's a beautiful time now to uh, share of our good, and that's another aspect of an abundance consciousness is that we just realize we're outlets for this divine, and as we share with joy, uh, it, it stimulates the law of circulation on our behalf, and, and as we create that vacuum of our joyous sharing, uh, it returns to us multiplied in so many ways. That's a beautiful principle, and thank you for supporting Mile High with your love, your gifts. I know they return to you in such great, great, wonderful blessings. You are angels. And uh, we have an affirmation as you hold that gift or tithe in your hand. Let's declare together... God is my instant, constant, and abundant supply. As I share with joy, I enter the flow of ever-increasing abundance. And so it is. Amen. We come with beautiful secrets. We come with perfect is written on our hearts, written on our souls. We come to every new morning with possibilities only we can hold, that only we can hold. Redemption comes in strength.
Uh, thank you, Andy. Andy Achenbach, always great to have you with us. Andy and the Mile High Band, directed by Dr. Ken Routenstrauss. Ah, oh, that's great. I've enjoyed this time together. Hey, if you're a guest here at Mile High today, this is our contemplative service. You're welcome back to it, or you can explore our 8 and 10 o'clock on Sundays and uh, enjoy that as well. Uh, and there's a welcome center right in the middle of the lobby, and those fine folks there have a lot of gifts for you. Uh, uh, they want to give you a free latte and things like that. So uh, stop over there. And uh, who's going to be over there? You are. Reverend Carroll is going to be there. Outstanding. Uh, and then if you would like some prayer today, um, you can fill out written prayer requests at the counters by the windows in the lobby. And also these wonderful prayer partners right here. Our Mile High prayer partners are right down here. You can just wait till the aisles clear a little bit. Approach any one of them and they'll speak the word of truth for you and get things going. Well, hey, let's stand for the benediction and uh, a few things going on here. Uh, we got the community center revved up and raring to go for you. Great food over there. Wonderful people. Dr. Patty, hand that mic to her. Uh, Dr. Patty is going to be over there at the table. Tell us about the Lakota Way event. Yes, this coming Friday night, the 17th at 6 o'clock in the community center, we're having a Lakota Way Center benefit dinner for uh, the center that works with addictions, not only through the Lakota, the Native American community in Denver, but anyone with addictions. So it's gonna be great. There's gonna be Native dancing and a good feather, and it's, I hope you can come. And, and hand that to her. Reverend Carroll, tell us about your Wednesday Night Live series. Is it part of our Recovery Month series? Right, we're in uh, Recovery Month here in August, and I'm gonna be continuing with the book by Gabriel Bernstein, The Universe Has Your Back. And this week, we're gonna talk about how and why the world is your classroom and everyone in it. <laughs> That's right, and everything in it. Uh, very good. Hey, tonight, if, you, if you're just aching for more of this kind of quiet stuff and, and a healing energy, we have our healing light service tonight. Uh, and it's over in the Vote Center Auditorium, 5.30. Arrive a little earlier, they'll get you all set up. And it's a time to just bask in the healing energy. Uh, some people have prepared, will have prepared the space for you. And uh, uh, I look forward to it. It's going to be a great thing. And also out in the lobby, if you've not yet had a chance to sign a card of intent, it was your intention of how to prosper mile high in the coming year in your sharing, then stop out there and uh, fill out that card. And thanks for being a part of that expression of our shared abundance. So we go forth now f into... The greater opportunities of our life, knowing we're fueled by limitless abundance and our consciousness soars. This moment and every moment now and always, and so it is. Amen. <laughs>